once the mediator has finished offering his or her opening statement, it is time for the parties to give theirs. Each party is invited to describe the dispute from their perspectives and the financial and or emotional consequences that may have resulted from it. This is an opportunity for everyone to lay out the basic premises behind the concerns and issues of the case. It is not a back and forth conversation, rather it is a presentation of ideas. While hearing both sides, the mediator must remain neutral and ensure that the discussion remains civil and productive. The opening stage allows the mediator to explain clearly the process to the parties and also helps the mediator understand how far apart the parties are on the issues in dispute. The next step in the process is to move into the joint discussion, which allows the mediator and the parties to talk to each other. This leads to the second stage of our mediation process, the exploration. The second stage of the mediation process is referred to as the exploration stage, which usually begins with a joint discussion where the mediator might encourage the parties to respond directly to the opening statements with the aim to further define the issues. In this stage, the mediator assists the parties in beginning a productive exchange of information about the dispute and when appropriate, helps them vent their feelings and emotions. The goal of this stage is to gather enough information from the parties to identify key issues and concerns and to assist the parties to develop an understanding of others' positions. One way for the mediator to start the stage is by recapping and summarizing the opening statements that were given by each party. This open discussion allows the mediator to ask questions if he or she needs clarifications on some specific issues and give the parties the opportunity to explain the situation from their perspective. Since disputing parties often have difficulties listening to each other, the mediator may act as a translator, repeating what he or she heard to be sure that each party understands the other party's perspective. In the first part of the exploration stage, the discussions, either joint or with the mediator alone, are usually focused on the dispute and the rights and wrongs of each party's position. As the mediation moves on, the mediator should encourage the parties to reflect beyond their position into their interests and needs. This allows the mediator and the parties to work on the key issues of the dispute and move towards a more productive and constructive dialogue. The mediator should use the clarifying questions to make sure he or she understood correctly and to obtain the information needed to identify the main issues in dispute. In identifying the issues, and the mediator may write them down on a flip chart, the mediator should ask the parties to establish their priorities in order to formulate an agenda. Through this exchange between the parties, the mediator will develop a rough agenda of issues he or she thinks is important to explore. Then, the mediator should start with the first issue in the agenda and through opening questions, he or she should look for pertinent information to redirect the party's attention and focus from their position into their interest. It is important to note that the mediator should always guide the conversation, especially when the parties are unable to communicate directly. Some communication techniques that the mediator can use to facilitate the communication includes active listening, rephrasing, summarizing, and asking open-ended questions. The mediator can invite also the parties to use such techniques when communicating with the opposing side. Sometimes when emotions run high during the exploration stage or more often after, the mediator may call a break and invite the parties to meet in separate rooms. 
A private meeting, also known as a caucus, is a chance for each party to meet privately with the mediator and speak freely in a confidential setting. For the mediator is an opportunity to further explore each party's case and look for vital information that may help in the resolution of the dispute. A caucus can serve several functions, such as building a trusting relationship between the parties and the mediator, allowing the parties to vent their emotions, narrowing the main issues, uncovering hidden agendas, exploring settlement options, allowing experts to meet, and helping the parties overcome an emotional impasse. While the mediator is caucusing with one party, it's advisable to give the other side a specific task to work on. During these meetings, the mediator usually goes back between the two separate rooms and encourages the parties to explore options for resolution and come up with ideas and proposals.